What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, June 8th. Welcome to this week's video update. We will jump into the alerts here. Uh, just kind of an update on the overall portfolio. So we are we're sitting at about two to one as far as our short delta versus our theta. Uh, so when we when we're trying to manage our portfolio, we like to keep a little bit of a short bias, a little bit of a short delta to protect us from high velocity moves to the downside. And so our delta, our short delta ratio is about two times that of our theta, which is right in line where we like to keep it. Sometimes around one to one, all the way up to five to one is kind of our max of where we like to be. Uh, so we're in a good position there. I'll go over that towards the end of the video here. Let's jump into the alerts. Had a lot of adjustments this week. Just that time of the cycle to do so. Expiration week is next Friday. So we coming into that expiration week, we'd like to start making our adjustments if needed. And starting out, we had a, a rolling adjusting trade in the QQQ. So we have several sets of short call verticals, which were previously part of iron condors. We kept those on to continue to keep that short bias, that short delta in our portfolio. I did get a couple of questions about this about why would, you, why would you roll specifically, because we are rolling for a slight debit in this case. And the, the only reason that you roll for a debit is because you, you, you still have that directional assumption or you still wanna utilize that trade for the short delta in your portfolio like we're doing here. So if I didn't, if I didn't want this trade, if I, if I didn't want this trade on, if I didn't want that short delta, I would have just closed this trade for a loss, but the fact is where we're at uh, portfolio wise with our, with our delta to theta ratio, like I just mentioned, is we're right where we wanna be. So if I close this out, next thing I'd be doing is going out and looking for a short bias trade to add in some of that short delta to our portfolio. So there's no reason not to just roll this, keep it on and, and uh, keep, keep extending duration, which is what we're doing here. So if we go to the QQQs, here is, here's that piece. So it's the one with four contracts here. We rolled it to the 173, 176 call spread. You can see price is just right there in the middle, right barely within our range here. We do have these other two sets that we have not rolled yet. These are still in June. And as you can see here, we're, we're slightly out of the range. I'm hoping that we can you know, potentially get a little bit of a down move here. And so that when we roll these next week, We'll be rolling for a credit. If not, we'll roll for a debit, which is not optimal, but, but that's what we need to do to keep that short delta. So just looking for that down move to, to benefit these pieces and to, uh, to benefit our overall portfolio. So regardless of where price is, we will be rolling both these sets of short call verticals from June to July, early next week. So look for that. Next trade was a closing trade in Amazon. So this was that post earnings short put vertical that we had on Amazon that we put on right after the earnings announcement. Moved against us right away, but we rolled a couple times and we were able to take a big loser and, and turn that into a profit. So great trade there. If we take a look at, at a chart of Amazon, just to give you an idea, AMZN. So we put this trade on right here. So right after they announced earnings, uh, price is about right here when we put it on and a lot of times it'll kind of grind sideways to higher and that's what we were looking for. Unfortunately, it dropped significantly. We only had that on as a one day expiration trade. So we rolled that out to the next expiration, kind of went sideways to up for a little bit. We wanted, we, you know, we felt like it had that continued upside movement uh, in the short term. Plus, it helped balance our portfolio by giving us a long balance trade to offset some of the short delta. And so it just made sense to, to continue to roll that. And then it finally took off, went to the upside, and we booked a, booked a small profit. So going from a huge loser to a small winner, uh, that's the name of the game. I mean, if you can take those losers and, and, and adjust and roll and, and, and manage those into winners, that makes a huge difference in your consistency and profitability over time. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in oil, which is CL. So basically all we did was roll down our calls from 78 to 67 and a half. Price had moved significantly down, breached our downside short strike and our, and our break even at the time. 
So we just simply roll down our untested side, just like we teach in the course. So if we take a look at oil now, and you can see we had the significant move down, which is, which is what was testing that side. If we go to our Analyze tab, this is what that looks like now. So our, our calls right here, we simply rolled those down, and now we've got this, uh, this adjusted strangle here. Just waiting for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay. Keep in mind, I get a lot of questions about this. When you're looking at the P&L, you know, I'm showing a negative 1,649. That doesn't take into account the, the piece that we already took off for the profitable side. So keep that in mind. After you make an adjustment, don't pay attention to this P&L number because it doesn't take in everything into account. We'll calculate that all up once we, once we get out of the trade. And, uh, and, <clears throat> and so... Just keep that in mind. So we're just wait. We just want kind of price to stay in this range, theta to decay. If it moves outside, we'll make an adjustment as necessary. But for now, it's just the sit and wait game. Next trade was an opening trade in Adobe. So this was a pre-earnings long straddle in Adobe. And as we teach in the course, what we're doing here is typically implied volatility expands going into earnings. So this is one of the only times that we'll ever buy a long straddle as opposed to sell it. And looking for a profit of about 20%. Uh, so we benefit from both a big price move and an expansion in implied volatility. Now what happened in Adobe, I'm going to skip over a couple of alerts here and go to where we closed that. So we closed it just two days later. Uh, if I can get it, here it is. So uh, two days later on the 7th. So we put it on the 5th, took it off on the 7th, closed it for about a 15% profit in just two days. As I mentioned, didn't quite make that 20%. However, we had a huge spike in IV as well as uh, that expansion, a huge spike in implied volatility as well as a decent move in price. So if we take a look at our chart here, this is where we took it off. So we had that, we got in around here, Boom, we had that huge move down and this spike in implied volatility, booked a profit, and it was a good it was a good call to book it because look what happened today. Price turned around and applied volatility contracted. So in a later alert here, I'll show you, we actually re-entered today to get back into this trade to go for another try to try to squeak out some more profit because they don't announce earnings until the 14th. So I'll go over that alert here in just a second. Let's get back to get back in order of where we are here. Uh, so there's the Adobe trade. Okay, so next trade was another rolling adjusting trade. This one in IWM. So we rolled our short call vertical. It was previously part of an iron condor from June to, June to July. So if we take a look at IWM, what you'll see here is we've got a couple pieces on. We've got, we've got a full iron condor, but then the alert that I'm talking about here is this short call vertical. That's not right. Uh, let me figure out what the strikes are here. It's the 166, 160. Yeah, there we go. So just looking for some more down move. Again, holding this, rolling this to keep that short bias, that short delta in our portfolio and, and continue to uh, extend duration on that trade. We've also got a full iron condor here, which is right here. You can see Price is still well within our range, looking for a little bit of downside, a little bit more theta to decay, time to pass to benefit that trade. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in Nat Gas. So we added an iron condor in Nat Gas, uh, looking to close the winners at between 30 and 40%. Just a standard iron condor here. Still very centered, nothing to do here. Applied volatility has increased a little bit since we put this on, so you, that's why you see it's down slightly while still centered, uh, but just waiting to see what happens there. And then the next trade is we had another uh, we had a, another iron condor on that we that we ended up booking, booked for over over fifty percent of max profit on that piece. So now we're still just holding the the iron condor that I mentioned in this alert here. Next trade was another rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is our long put vertical. Again, another short bias trade that we have to keep that, that short balance, that short bias in our portfolio. And remember with options on futures, you have to do it in two separate transactions. So we sold this one and then we rebought this one. So if we take a look at what that looks like, uh, it's right here. So you can see price is, is right here on a break even, needs a little bit of downside to, to benefit that. 
And then in the ES, we also have an iron condor, which is a totally separate trade. Uh, but you can see price is still right in our range here. Just need a little bit of downside and some more time to pass to benefit that piece. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we've got, we rolled one of our sets of short call verticals. The next alert, we rolled another set of short call verticals. Again, this is kind of all very similar, similar trades. So if you look at DIA, you can see uh, I just need a little bit of down movement there. And then same thing with the other one, just need a little bit of downside movement in the Dow to benefit those. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in EWZ. So had a massive down move in the EWZ, which is the Brazilian index. If we take a look at the chart first, what you'll see here is, is you know, this day here was just, it was about a 5% move down just itself. Now you can see today it's already rebounded almost 5%. So some significant volatility in Brazil it got us a good spike in implied volatility. So we did two things here. One is we rolled down our calls. So standard mechanical adjustment, rolled down our calls and uh, rolled down our untested side. So you can see we've got this adjusted strangle now. Now, obviously in hindsight, this thing ripped back higher, almost 5%. So if we look at those calls that we rolled down, they're actually, they're actually losing now. Uh, and, that, and that just happens. I mean, sometimes you get whipsawed a little bit, but you have to stay mechanical. Don't second guess your decisions. Uh, you can see price is still very centered now. We just, we just need some more theta to decay. Watch our profit line creep up. Obviously it moves outside of here. We'll make the necessary adjustments. But the, the next alert that we sent out was, a, was another adjustment, adjustment where we opened up a new strangle to collect more credit and, and continue to, to manage that trade. Now, obviously with today's up move, it's, it's not very centered now. Still well within our range though. So just looking for some time to pass and for some uh, implied volatility to contract to benefit both of those pieces. Next trade, I mentioned that one. Next trade was a closing trade. That's the closing of pre-earnings long straddle in Adobe. Booked, uh, booked a nice profit in there. Next trade was a closing trade in McDonald's. So this is a trade that we put on as a short put vertical. So a bullish, bullish trade in McDonald's. And McDonald's was, this trade actually went against us for the majority of the time that we were in it. In fact, I, I got some emails from members saying, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're losing in this trade. What should we do? Well, what we do is we stay mechanical and we let the probabilities play out. You know, we put this trade on uh, kind of around this area here and just kind of grinded lower in it. And it was pretty much at a loss the entire time. And then all of a sudden, boom, in two days, up, up. And we were able to book a profit of over 70% of max profit on that trade. So just keep in mind, you got to let the probabilities play out. One of the reasons that we put this trade on to begin with was we were getting a little bit over short in our portfolio. So we wanted to add in a, a long bias trade. So that was part of the purpose here. And we looked at we looked at McDonald's as a potential good candidate to give us some of that upside. And eventually it, it did and it worked out. So booked over a profit, uh, booked a profit over of, of over 70% of max on that one. So great trade there. Next trade, a closing adjusting trade in CL oil. So we had we had two different positions on in oil. I already went over the one that we had that we adjusted that you can see here. This other piece, which you can see is zeroed out after the close today, but this is just another strangle that we added on. We, we only had it on for what was that? Um, eight days. Booked a booked a profit of around 30% of max profit. Took in, took in that profit and so still just holding the other one. If we look at the implied volatility level of oil, still about the same, but still about the same as when we, when we sent out that alert. So about 52 on the IV percentile. So if we get a little pop up in implied volatility and some more price movement, we may add on another strangle as well as continue to manage this one as necessary. So we'll see what happens in oil. I always talk about it, how it's my favorite trading vehicle. Anytime the implied volatility indicators get above 50, I, I always want to be in there because you get such a good bang for the buck as far as the amount of capital you have to use versus the potential profit. 
And then lastly, we, we re-entered this Adobe pre-earnings long straddle. So um, touching on that again, so we just we, we re-entered very almost the very same trade. In fact, if you look at the where we got in, uh, we paid 1168. I think we paid 1170 for, for the earlier one that we did this week. So what happened was at, going back to the chart, as I mentioned, you know, we put the first one on back here on the fifth had this huge move down and the spike in implied volatility, which, let's see if we can get this chart to update, to show our IV indicators. It's just working a little slow here today. Uh, come on, Adobe, there we go. So we put this initial trade on here on the fifth uh, when implied volatility was fairly low leading into earnings, got this huge spike down uh, and the spike up in implied volatility. So we booked a profit down here. And then today, price reversed uh, almost about to where we got in before and implied volatility contracted again. So we re-entered the trade almost at the same price at $11.68. And so implied or, uh, earnings are announced on June 14th after the market closes. So we want to be out of the trade by then. So hopefully we can uh, kind of rinse and repeat and get the same action, either a big move one way or another. And uh, if it's typical, you know, you see that implied volatility expand into that earnings announcement. So in the next, in the next six days or so, if we can get that expansion plus a bit of a price move, hopefully we can book another profit in that and double dip twice before that earnings announcement. So we'll see what happens. Other trades that we have on, we've got uh, two positions on in the Euro. So we've got a strangle here, which you can see we're up about 232 bucks on, uh, not quite enough to take off yet. And then we've got another strangle, neither of which have been adjusted either way uh, on either, either of the sides. So this one is uh, hanging out in the upper end of the range. Um, no need to adjust or anything yet, but just continue to watch that one. I mentioned CL, I mentioned ES, Nat Gas, Notes. Okay, so this is, this is one where uh, I'm playing it slightly different than the way we teach to, uh, to roll in the course. With, these, uh, with this one, with this adjusted strangle where we've got two contracts on, I've been kind of just holding off to see if we can get a little bit more increase in profit before I roll. Now, typically we like to roll, once we get under 21 days to expiration, we want to roll that to the next expiration because that gamma, that slope of our profit line starts to accelerate. So I will roll this early next week, but just giving it a little bit more time because it was, you know, real pretty dead centered in range. So just giving it a little bit more time, see if we could get some more theta decay before I rolled or, or even if I got enough, I was just going to close it and continue to manage the other piece. But the other piece is this here which is uh, it's a full strangle here, just, just kind of hanging out within our range. So nothing to do there. But look on, these, on this one that's in July, look for us to roll that to August early next week. We wanna, we wanna get out of that uh, July cycle on that one um, early next week. Wheat, we've got an iron condor on here. If we can get a little bit of an up movement, a little bit more decay, we'll take that one off and actually we'll be completely out of wheat at that point. We are in the profit on this trade, similar to our soybean trade, which we continue to roll and manage for, for quite a long time. We've been in this wheat trade for quite a long time too, so it'll be cool to see that one come off the books, uh, assuming we can get uh, another little bit of a slight up move. If not, if it continues lower, we're gonna add another iron condor on there, add some more credit, continue to manage that as we teach. Apple, we've got a long put vertical here. You can see we've, we've rolled this a couple times, just looking for some downside in Apple to benefit that. Hasn't been the case uh, recently. We've had a lot of up moves in Apple, so that's, that's kind of worked against us on that trade. But continuing to keep that in our, in our portfolio for that short bias, uh, uh, that short delta that we need. I mentioned Adobe, I mentioned DIA. EEM, so we've got a strangle on here, got some profit there, not quite enough to take off yet, but if we get a little bit more theta to decay uh, going into next week, we might be able to book a profit in that one. EWW, got a strangle on here, kind of same story, need a little bit more profit before we take that off. And then our other piece is an adjusted strangle, which is actually adjusted into a straddle because the both strikes are at 47. 
So just needing a little bit of up move there to, uh, to benefit that one. And we'll continue to manage that into next week. I mentioned EWZ, I mentioned IWM, I mentioned the Qs, and XLK. So this is another uh, technology-based ETF that we put on for some short bias. Uh, this one, we could have rolled by now. I'm just, you know, we're, we're, we're way down here. So just give it a little bit more time, see if we get some up movement before I roll. But we'll look to roll this next week as well. We've got seven days, so we'll be into expiration week next week. So we will look to roll that one uh, next week as well. So that's all our trades. That's all of our positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We will talk to you next week. Have a good one.